We need to get in the car. We'll get in the car. convincing Mission Impossible mask I have ever uh, encountered. It's the most running I've done in a long time. Well, Ooh. you'll have a chance to catch your breath. Well, I welcome the audience to Season 2, Episode 26 of Talk Heathen. It's Season you are 2? Season 2. Oh, dang, oh wow. Yeah. We had a short first season. Because mm. it, it was a pilot season and we were so badass. <laughs> no. you, um, got, you got picked up and everything? We got picked up right away. Um, I had an in with the producer. Um, so <laughs> 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 um, it is. You went uh, there. I didn't go there. I think we're going to leave that innuendo <laughs> unstated. Um, it is uh, July first, uh, twenty eighteen. I am Jamie Boone, and this, instead of my regular co-host, is Anthony Magna Bosco. Hello, everybody. Go, go, go. Nice to be here, Jamie. Yeah, thank you for coming down. Yeah, it was nice to, yeah. to get the the, the call. Like, yes. hey, uh, you want to come down and help us out? You were, you were. It's a higher calling. You were, you were called well, to the non-ministry of. Yeah, you're like, hey, uh, we need, we got an opening here. You want to come? Yeah, I, yeah. Eric I'd is busy to. trying his hand at his new backup profession, um, semi-professional shirt stripper or something. In so. Vegas, no In less. In Vegas, no yeah. less. That's the big time mm. stripper thing. I think. I don't know. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that this is my first time on Talk Ethan, but technically, it's not. It's, it's not. On. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it was maybe. It, you, was when it, was, it was. It was your pilot show, maybe. Yeah, it was and when we were doing a uh, uh, call practice. Yeah. So you had me sit down mm -hmm. over there. Okay. Uh, I, I, looking back, I probably should have sat here. Mm -hmm. And we started. I didn't even know that those recordings would be going out. Like I thought we were just testing out the phones. Neither did I. I was going through my backpack. I had a T-shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And next thing I know, it's like, just, hey, Anthony, you're all over the internet. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're used to that. You, I, I'm kind of used to being behind the camera rather than being in front of it, though. That's honestly. true. Honestly, yeah. yeah. And that would be on some sort of YouTube production that you'd like to do? Yes, play? yes, mm -hmm. yes. I've been doing this thing called street epistemology for going on six years now, mm -hmm. where I would go out, I still do, um, mm -hmm. just did it a couple days ago. I initiate talks with people, I record the, the conversations, and mm -hmm. I'm using a Socratic method called street epistemology. I have a mm -hmm. sticker right there. Ah. And it's, it's quite fascinating how mm -hmm. simply asking questions of your conversation partner after they make a claim mm -hmm. to figure out how they could be so sure that what they think is true is really true. Mm -hmm. And been doing that for a while. We have, what's really cool is that other people are doing it. This isn't just yeah, my own content. Up, uh, yeah. Dan is uh, doing it. He's We've got, at a convention right oh now, I think, doing gosh. a workshop. I'm so excited about this. Objectively, mm -hmm. Dan mm -hmm. is in Ohio right now. Mm -hmm. he, he just, from my understanding, he gave a workshop on street epistemology. For those that, that don't know, Dan uh, was an individual that I encountered on a college campus. He was a mm -hmm. believer at the time. We engaged with each other, or I engaged with him using street epistemology. He ended up um, eventually abandoning his belief, not necessarily sp specifically for that one encounter, but he liked the method of SE so much that he ended up learning it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he joins me on, I have a podcast called Epistemic. Right. Uh, he's one of my co-hosts. And we, uh, he, so he, he's not only learned it and loves it, he wanted to teach it to others. So yeah. he's at the Secular Student Alliance Conference in, right. in Ohio. Yeah. And from my understanding, he gave a workshop to close to 80 people. And I've heard from a lot Good of number. people who were there that loved it. They absolutely loved it. So he just, well, he knocked good. it out of the yeah. park. So yeah, he's uploading content. Uh, we have a few people, Eddie from Deep Discussions. We've got Tyrone from Let's Chat. Linda out of Finland, mm -hmm. Love Mako is her channel. Uh, we got Ben from South Africa, his channel is called Seeds of Doubt. Mm. So Good what's name. really cool is rather than having to remember all that, we have a playlist on, on the mm. Street Epistemology mm. YouTube channel. It's, mm -hmm. If you go to tinyurl.com forward slash SE latest releases, 
Oh, we decided nice. to keep you it really the, short. Yeah, you got the real, yeah, as opposed to a tiny URL, 5126. We, we got to came up with some names. Maybe we should have come up with something shorter. I don't know. Maybe no, they, no, no, it's good. I was Maybe Mark promised. put it on the screen. There, there we go. Yeah. There it is. SE latest screen. releases. So this is the one place that anyone can go to if they want to see mm -hmm. real examples of street epistemology with real people mm -hmm. from others besides just myself. Yeah, although you are, people, uh, for the longest time, you've been kind of synonymous with this method. Um, even though I think Peter Magnagosian wrote the... Magnagosian? I'm Magnagosian. <laughs> wow. Um, that's, that, is, that, that is exactly how synonymous... <laughs> it, 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 that's Peter hilarious. Peter Bogosian, Bogosian. Does, uh, you know, has his name replaced on the cover. Um, now, uh... <laughs> Peter Bogosian wrote the book uh -huh. called The Manual for Creating Atheists that mm -hmm. I read and I, I was inspired to go and start doing talks. And mm -hmm. when you start uploading stuff to YouTube, as you know, mm -hmm. people start watching it and it, it spreads, right? It mm -hmm. catches. And that, that's kind of what's been happening with, with SE. Mm -hmm. There weren't any examples other than the book. Yeah. So I think I sort of had like maybe a first mover advantage. Uh, and yeah. for better or for worse, I think I am somewhat associated with it. However, there are for other better. people who... Well, uh, for <laughs> there, <laughs> there are other yeah. people who are uploading content. Is my point, yeah. and and they're coming at it from different ways, mm -hmm. different countries. There's different, even different terminology that people use for these. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh. Like for example, the word faith um, means belief in German, for example. Oh, they don't have a separate word for that. They don't. Huh. Uh, Oslo, uh, Norway is the same way, and there's a few other countries like that too. So it's 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 interesting to see this method catching on and people are using it to examine all sorts of belief claims, not just does a god exist. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, people believe lots of things and oftentimes for bad reasons. So. Yeah, we explore all sorts of stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you can check out, check out that YouTube channel, maybe just bookmark mm -hmm. it. We update it almost daily with new stuff. That's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. and the uh, relevant links will be in the description, um, as well as places that you could find. Uh, uh, Anthony. Sorry, I, I paused because I was nervous <laughs> that I was going to miss, miss up, mess up your last name now. Mm. Um, Anthony Magnabosco on uh, social media, the internet, the interwebs. Perfect pronunciation, too. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, you can uh, call into this live call-in show at the number listed here at the bottom of the screen, 512-686-0279. Um, you get that. Most people get the mirror image backwards. Mm. Um, uh, encourage your friends to call, encourage creationists to call, uh, test my infinite patience, um, your ridiculousness will fail in comparison to it. Um, Ouch. Yeah. That being said... You actually want them to call, don't you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, I... what I'm saying is, it, even if you were trying, you could not get me to be hmm. ridiculously mad. Although, evidence No one's going to ruffle your feathers today, is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, see if that after the out. show, you can come on down for the brief interlude between this show and the atheist experience. Mm. Um, uh, and after that, we have our uh, after show dinner here. I think we're having tamales today. They're going to be delicious. Um, where my unruffled feathers will, <laughs> I don't know, be on full peacock style display. Preening. Yeah. And I think um, our celebrity guest, Anthony Magnabosco, whose name I can still pronounce correctly, um, will be joining us for dinner. Uh, I, I don't think I can make it. I'm so oh, sorry. Being my, stood up by my yeah, guest. Well, my daughter is about an hour away staying with friends at like a lake. Uh, I need to okay. pick her up and she needs to be home before another event tonight. So, But you didn't have to come up with an excuse. It's fine. It's, yeah, we're friends. it's, it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I believe you. Um, do you? Yeah, but do I have sufficient reason to believe you? How, you yeah, how confident are you that my claim <laughs> is true? I would uh, imagine you wouldn't say 100%. No, I would say you know, 95. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You're not going to, you don't want I'm, to I, I'm get me to doubt that. I'm tempted to explore it, but I don't want to hold up the. Yeah, the well, college. let's get some, let's get some callers. Let's start with Dennis. In Alton, Illinois. How are you doing today, Dennis? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Oh, hey, Dennis. What's up? You're in Alton, Illinois? Yeah. That is correct. Mm. And you are live on the air with Jamie Boone and Anthony Magnabosco. Howdy. Yeah. What did you want to talk about howdy, today? Howdy. Well, a lot of callers, theists in particular, call mm. in to share near death experiences as evidence for the supernatural mm -hmm. or even God and afterlife. 
and I am an atheist who just recently had a near-death experience, and I did not come away with that same uh, impression. In fact, mine had some unique elements that helped me understand what caused it in the first place and why it didn't seem so divine. What, what is a near-death experience exactly yeah. for you? Well, for me, I had my heart stop because I, I had a rather major severe heart attack. And I'm sorry to hear while that. the uh, very uh, professional and great ER crew was working to get me going again, I had a uh, maybe a dream, don't know if you could call it that, but uh, while unconscious, an experience I remembered that when I popped back to was stuck in my head. Hmm. Yeah. That's what I call a near-death experience. Okay, for you, a near-death yeah. experience is remembering something that you think occurred when you were unconscious. Well, like the best I could do, think it occurred while unconscious. Of, of course, time dilates, and we have no idea exactly when a memory comes into your head at that point. So maybe it was the instant before or after I was conscious. I can only tell how I felt at the time. Well, my, my understanding is that, um, well, when, when you remember something, that memory, regardless of when the time you are remembering is, is being formed um, in your mind. Basically, there's very, the structures in your brain that um, imagine things and remember things are, um, Malleable. For, for many people, unsettlingly similar. But uh, whether or not your memory was entirely generated after the near-death experience or generated during the near-death experience. Uh, did you want to go into further details about what that experience was or what significance it holds for you? Well, I can tell you about the experience because it's an interesting story, and then what happened to me immediately thereafter that uh, shaped my memory of it, because you guys hit a number of things right on the head. Uh, what I experienced, well, believed to experience during the near-death episode, and then what I experienced during the conscious moments after it that kind of shaped that memory in my head. Uh, after I had been, after I arrived at the ER and they'd done an EKG and confirmed I was having a heart attack, they could go into kind of like rush mode. So they bring a crash card in, uh, the staff all starts going into automatic process. Everyone's got a job to do, they start doing it. And shortly after that, within, within a few minutes of that, I lost consciousness and I found myself in a dark room and I hear a phone ring. Phone's ringing. So I pick mm -hmm. it up. I pick up the phone. I put the receiver to my head. And this thing starts to suck the wind out of me. <sighs> right out of my face. And I can't pull the phone away from my head. I try, but I can't. It keeps sucking the air away. So I try to fight back for a breath. But each time mm -hmm. I try and draw a breath, oh, it sucks the wind away from me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm slipping, like I'm going to pass out, even though I now know I was already unconscious. unconscious but yeah. I get angry. So I start fighting this thing back, fighting this phone for my breath, drawing as hard as I can, mm -hmm. hard as I can, draw a breath, and it mm -hmm. pulls my breath away again. I try again, pull a breath, and it sucks away again. But a third time or so, I, I draw the breath as hard as I can, and the lights come back on in the room. I'm laying on the gurney, obviously. There's a nurse standing over me with an ambu bag, breathing for me. And the machine's all around the room going, dee 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 and it dawned on me right then, it's like, holy cow, that was a near-death experience. And not only that, I happened to wake up uh, just by fortune. I may either could have died or not woken up or woken up much later to see there was physical stimuli all about the room. Someone breathing for me, machines going off. And my dying, unconscious brain is still trying to take in things, fight for survival, grasp at whatever sense you can get a hold of and go for it. And that... It was amazing to me because so many people say, oh, I saw a light to the antenna. Oh, they, they, have, they think there's something supernatural happening given them this experience. Because so rarely do you wake up during that moment where you're well, nearly dead and get to see that my, well, my theory, how I believe it, it's what's happening to your body and the world around you still coming mm. through in your brain trying to make sense of it. Have you always That's been, I have you always been, I assume you're atheist? Yeah. I am an atheist. Yeah. Okay. And are you attributing... I was not always an atheist, though I was raised devoutly Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until my late teens, early 20s, that I really kind of came to the conclusion that I was an atheist. Are you attributing the lack of a theistic experience because you were never exposed to it? Is that kind of the point? No. What I'm saying is, uh, because I, I was able to become conscious and see the stimuli around me in the room, the nurse breathing for me with the bag valve mask, the alarms going off in the machines. Okay. Those mm -hmm. corresponded very directly with the experience I had mm. 
uh, yeah. in the unconscious state. The reason I ask that is because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not uncommon to hear people say that they had a near-death experience. Yeah, I've, yeah. I even encountered somebody who said she fell through like a, a two-story structure and fell and she had basically a near-death experience and thought that she was interacting with Jesus. So it's not uncommon to hear Yikes. people point to these experiences as evidence that their God is real, which yeah. is why I was asking if, um, yeah. if you're bringing this up to sort of contrast your experience with the experience that we might hear from people who are attributing that thing to a god. Well, I, if I perhaps didn't have the uh, chance to see what else was going on in the room, mm -hmm. or that if my conviction was a bit differently, I can't. I can't know how what I've attributed. I can only think about it with my own brain. Mm -hmm. That's uh, true. I yeah. do know I wasn't actually out of the woods quite yet, uh, because it was after that that they intubated me, and. Uh, I, either they weren't sedating me enough or I couldn't pass out because I had yeah. what's called flash pulmonary edema. My lungs filled mm. with fluid because my heart had stopped. Yeah. And uh, that yeah. was after I'd woken up and then gone to the thing they intubate and you're choking. Mm -hmm. And I felt right about then, I think I'm going to die. Because until then, you're just scared. Well, maybe it's not as bad. <laughs> right at that moment, it's, oh, this might be the end. You, you may be braver than the average yeah. person if people are running around you, uh, a, you're being intubated, and you still are sort of like, eh. I'm sorry to hear that you had to go through that yeah. experience. That sounds, that sounds okay. traumatic. And I had a family member that was, that was basically dying, and he, he was gasping for his last breaths. And hmm. I think he was, he was essentially drowning, I think, in his, his, the fluids in his lungs. Oh. So it kind of makes me wonder, like... Uh, that, that's that's it, actually what was happening because yeah, then yeah. everyone around me is telling you to be calm, be patient because you're you're motioning or gesturing because I after they'd intubated my lungs it's still full of fluid they were they hadn't pulled the fluid out of my lungs yet mm. and uh, that's actually <laughs> brings up the second part people say there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole <laughs> despite I was raised very devoutly uh, Pentecostal mm -hmm. you know, holy rollers mm -hmm. dancing the aisle. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm curious, though, Dennis, is that if you were to hear a theist point to a near-death experience, something very similar, and they were absolutely sure it was, you know, an angel giving them breath or something like that, what would your response be? I'm a little curious how somebody who's gone through a near-death experience might respond to a theist who, who says that this was a formative yeah. reason why they think their God is real. What would you tell them? See, it's challenging, because everything... The way you, you, you look back and, and try and piece something together, you only have the bits of information you were given. Or you, 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 the only piece of the puzzle in your own brain, your own logic center, to try and make sense of that. Most of my family that I have to deal with, every time I want to talk about it, I end up kind of tiptoeing because it's more important for me to be friends or, or, or family and to listen and say that's pretty crazy. But I usually would ask kind of the same questions you were saying right there. When you ask me the very first thing, uh, do you know when that memory formed? How do you know it formed when you were unconscious or versus right after? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. the other things that were going on in the room were actually what your brain was trying to make sense of. Yeah. And it almost always comes down to the, well, I have faith, because mm. you can't really know at that yeah. moment when your brain is in scatter form <laughs> what actually was happening. And maybe I'm not telling the stories that actually happened. I'm sure I'd get a well, different story from uh, the ER nurse. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't yeah. think they had a vacuum phone um, to your face, hopefully. Um, oh. Although that may be your mind trying to make a uh, sense of a machine breathing for it. Um, but y yeah, I think instances where faith is given as a blanket example are always sort of, I mean, what this show is designed to deal with. But um, particularly when it's just in, like, is a, a huge stopping block to the beginning steps of a person becoming interested in the actual work and, and knowledge of what it is to be a skeptic. Because as you said, oh, it's my brain piecing things together. The only thing I had was my logic center. How did my memories form? Well, that's the, the weaknesses that are there then are just the regular weaknesses of a, a brain, a mind uh, forming memory exacerbated by um, a lack of oxygen in most cases, um, which to me is sort of like a near-death experience is that mainstream, non-fun version of doing whippets, but... Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that, because I was gonna... <laughs> I, yeah. I had the opportunity to, to try marijuana legally in, mm -hmm. in Seattle mm -hmm. about three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and what you were describing about lo losing your memory and then, <laughs> and then finding explanations for what happened, 
was almost precisely what was happening to me after mm -hmm. I tried, like about five hours after taking an edible. <laughs> Are you trying to say that marijuana brings you closer to God? Is that what it is? Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> It was Sorry. pretty damn nice, though, yeah. I gotta say. Oh. But, uh, yeah, the, the, I was having gaps in my memory, mm -hmm. and then I was remembering that I had a gap, and then I would, I would seemingly remember what had happened in the gap. You know, for so example, did like... Did you remember, or did your brain just fill it in? <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the dilemma. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, most of your memories is your brain filling it in. So, uh, oftentimes, details of a memory are filled in afterwards by what your brain would expect to be there. Um, which is right. Why I, like, why didn't your brain fill in that this was an alien from Mars jumping up and down on your chest? Like, why did it go, or, or a beeping noise wasn't, uh, you know, a, a, a countdown for a rocket ship launching, per se, but it was, mm -hmm. it was a phone. Like, yeah. it seems like you, you know, your brain was picking realistic explanations for what yeah. these things might be. Um, not to say that I couldn't okay. pick something uh, something strange either. Yeah. The brain is a funny oh, thing. Perhaps I'm dating myself because I mean I picked up a phone <laughs> and put it to my head, and that's something. Was it a rotary phone? <laughs> yeah, it was actually, but it did have the cord on it still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no, what those... I mean is details like that. Um, it's one of those things where. So I have uh, friends that are close to me where I've heard them um, recount the same story multiple times and the details of that story change and the tone oh. with which they tell that story changes or at least one added added bonus that's my memories of it right so I was gonna just go <laughs> are you I, are you forgetting that no no, story? no I'm not it's it's part of the thing is like well no no, no you're remembering that wrong because the problem is that no I think your memories are just as human as theirs I think the takeaway here is that traumatized brains in general are probably not very reliable and know, traumatized right? yeah. brains may probably even be less reliable. So yeah. we probably need to be, be a little bit more cautious about mm -hmm. the weight that we give these excuse me, the weight that we give these experiences mm -hmm. when we're concluding that things are true. Yeah. I think that's I the big take. I could uh, disagree with that. That seems quite, quite reasonable. Yeah. If only we had a word for approaching coming to conclusions like that, like it could be skeptical. Logic, is the word for that? No. Um, Le skepticism. That is a good one. We needed a new ism. That's what the <laughs> discourse in America is missing today. Um, no. Um, well, this is a good call. Um, you know, it's a good story. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you called in, Dennis. Uh, I'm glad you survived it well, too to tell us. Yes, I was about to say yes. You Thank them, you. Uh, for if it helps so, or, or hurts, people attribute mystical experiences with helping them have life changes. That uh, was uh, the last day I smoked a cigarette, and uh, I've lost about 40 pounds, and I'm taking better care of myself, so. Wow. Um, well, congratulations, and good for you. a decent takeaway from it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, Dennis. Appreciate hey. that. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we're going to let I you go, at Dennis. At some point, I'll um, be able to see you guys live in Austin, maybe if I get to travel. I'm a oh, ways yeah. away from you, but uh, mm. it'd be awesome to be able to come out there and see you guys. Yeah, let us know. You can, what you, do. Uh, you can always email the show. Um, mail at talkheathen.com um, and that's a good way of keeping in touch with us. I um, think, and I think I'm back on like August 5th. Are you gone? Are you know, that far out? No, I know that you're I gonna be I'm on filming. the non-profit. I was, I, I was already, I did that already. I thought you were doing that again. I am, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, well, uh, maybe, the, maybe our wires got in. crossed. We'll put a cot in the back of the library. You can just always be, here. no. Um, it is be on here. all the shows. Yeah, in a good way. Uh, uh, all right, Dennis, I think we're going to move on, but uh, thanks for calling yeah, in today. Yeah, thanks for calling, Dennis. Have a great one, guys. That was a, uh, that was a very good call. I, I can't emphasize enough that skepticism isn't just being more rational thinking. There's a lot of needing to learn about biases is pretty much as important as learning. Oh, yeah. I would almost say more important than learning the actual name I of informal logical fallacies. Yes, I was yeah. just going to say that. I think it would be better if atheists mm -hmm. were more familiar with the things that our brains do mm -hmm. to process what it is we're experiencing yeah. and, and the frailties of the brain. Yeah. That, I think, yes, it's, it's good to know what you know, a logical fallacy is or mm -hmm. you know, that, type, that type ad hominem or something. But it's, it's this understanding of, of what our brains can do and mm -hmm. how we confuse things and the leaps that our brains make. Yeah. That is far more interesting and I think more valuable yeah. to understand than 
am I making a logical fallacy by saying that this is no, true because... No, you're an ad hominem. This yeah. is, so many people believe this, it's got to be true. Like, yes, it's, uh, it's, under, it's important yeah. to understand how that's a fallacy. And but yet, it's also I, important to understand why people come to that belief even though it is a fallacy, which is mm -hmm. the frailties of the, the mind and reasoning. I, I have to plug this podcast called You Are Not So Smart. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. ever heard of it. Almost well, it's not talking about me. So, <laughs> no. Almost every episode yeah. focuses on the various things that our, that our brains do. Mm -hmm. and, and the mistakes our brains are so apt to make. And it is an absolutely phenomenal podcast. I, I recommend everybody. If you're yeah. interested in having good conversations with people to understand how they believe what they believe, oh. uh, the okay. what, the why, and the how, uh, having a good grasp of the things that our brains do is great, and that's a great podcast. Yeah, and I would recommend um, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, which does news, science, and also... Mm. As the name would imply, okay. skepticism. Well, so, I'll see that, and I'll yeah. raise you. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 we could probably go back. No, no, and no forth I was, here. I was matching your recommendation with. Um, oh yeah, well, I recommend <laughs> reading all of the books generally in alphabetical order. By why is this popping out? Um, Sorry. All right, so our next caller, you may have heard of him before. His name is, as it's listed here, Murphy Eric. Oh no! Don't take that call. Eh, kind of obligated go, go. to. I took his chair. Look at me sitting here in his chair. <laughs> no, that's my chair. Um, I give you. I gave you the better chair. Okay. I always okay. make sure. That's I better. guess we should take it then. Yeah. Hey, Eric. You are live on Talk Even. Are you excited to be live on Talk Why Even? Why do you hate time? God? Because <laughs> he took everything from me. Eric, um, Eric, hey. Eric. What's going on, man? Yeah. Hello, hello. Hey, I just wanted to call and say hi. Anthony, I'm so glad that you were able to come in and, and, and fill in. I really, really appreciate you for that. Um, oh, it's, yeah. it's my pleasure, man. And it, yeah. it, it sounded like it resulted in a new, like, intro with the guy pulling the yeah. face, the face yeah. mask yeah. off. Yeah, I'm that not sure cool. whether you caught the intro, Eric, but it's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So are you fulfilling your desire just to sin in Sin City right now? He sins everywhere. Oh, you better believe it. I actually, I Sounds actually got a lot to uh, uh, to meet some fellow heathens uh -huh. out here uh, last night. Mm -hmm. I met up with the uh, Las Vegas atheists, and uh, they were phenomenal. The people were incredible. I want to give a shout out to Jerry. Jerry, the time out here was awesome. Thank you so much. Jerry has a last name. Uh, Jerry. I, I, That's a cool name. Jerry. Jerry. I, Jerry, <laughs> I forget her last name, but now that makes Bridges. Bridges. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I actually there were a lot of fans, Anthony, of you there as well. Yeah. Oh, and so nice. I actually have uh, I have a gift for you from some people mm. uh, out here. So we're gonna have to make sure that I get that. Is, oh, it, is it a GoPro battery? Boxing videos. <laughs> <laughs> I need a, I need some new GoPro battery. Yeah, actually, no, it's I'm, a pair of. Socks. I'd be very grateful to get anything. That's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, talk even so I didn't got pass along. Uh, you, we got something too, Jamie. Did we? We got something? Yes, we did. Mm. Okay. Can you disclose what it is, or are you just going <laughs> to no, be cryptic about it's it? It's a secret, because I don't know what it is. So it I, be, I don't know. It's really awesome. Um, so, so suspicious. Uh, we got that, <laughs> and I just wanted to say, yeah, I'm out here uh, celebrating my birthday in Vegas. I'm with family. Happy and, birthday. Um, yeah. I, You're like 17, thank you. 18 thank now? You, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Like He's 31. actually, he... Um, 21? Yeah, no, 22. 31. He's been drinking 31. for a year. Eh, you're off by a decade. You 40-year-old <laughs> senile fool. All right, well, thanks for calling in, Eric. I think we're going to move on to the Absolutely. real callers really now. Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah. That's cold. You're just kicking them off after that? Next yeah, week. well, I have the button. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Nice to see, talk to you, I guess. Right. Yeah, yeah. And happy birthday, and uh, we'll have to time. do some celebrating when you get back. Big plan. I'm eager to see what Bye, those everybody. gifts are, too. <laughs> Bye. Oh, he's gone. He hung oh. up on you. No. Oh. No. Hang up no, on no, 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 no. He's done. All right. Oh, he's um, done. He's uh, done. Uh, That's cheap, man. Uh, <laughs> so am I. So, um... <laughs> all right. Are you ready to... Let's see. Mumble. Um, yeah. Let's I don't, I don't take... Mumble. You don't mumble. I don't mumble. I'm, I mumble, but I don't. I try not to rumble. mumble in the jungle, but just don't rumble. I don't rumble that much. Sometimes well, I have to rumble. You you rumble 
far less than I mumble and fumble over my words. You, wait a second. Really? Probably. You don't rumble very often, and I, don't I certainly I fumble and mumble a lot. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that you mumble less than I rumble. No, no, no. I, I mumble and fumble. More. Probably either of those. More than More I than you rumble. Yeah. Well, this mm, illusion we? of comic genius is beginning to crumble, and with that note, we will move to Eric in, I'm sorry, Adam, wow. All right, Adam in Nashville, how are you doing today? Doing great, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, thanks. Hey, you were live on the air with Anthony and Jamie. What did you want to talk about today? Sure, well, and thank you so much for having Anthony Magnabosco on, and thank you for the talk you've been showing. I hope, I hope Eric's having a great time over there in, in Vegas. Yeah. But my question is, um, I'll give a little intro and then I'll lead to my question. Lately, I'm afraid of both strong theists, and I would say maybe, and I consider myself a liberal, but strong liberals, stronger than me, who many of whom are atheists, who strong theists seem to want to write their religion into law, and then strong atheists seem to want to write my intent into whatever is done. So I've seen a lot of people throw around the phrase, intent doesn't matter. And a lot of people get hit by that. Like, I don't know, like, Jamie, I really like your content. I've watched you a lot on the non sequitur show and stuff like that. Um, but I know you might make a joke relating to your sexuality or things like that. And it might, you know, maybe be like I would call an insider joke. Like you're kind of just picking fun at yourself and things like that. But if we take it to the extreme where intent doesn't matter, anything you say with any sort of word could be taken as offensive. And I'm very fearful of these people who bring the intent doesn't matter philosophy in. And I was going to, I really wanted to hear your guys' thoughts and maybe you guys throw this back and forth against me. Just to, to clarify, um, one, I, I kind of always have a problem with following through on applying sort of uh, broadly worded adages and axioms around as if they apply everywhere because um, that's not really how words work effectively but do you mean in relation to when someone says something and whether or not a specific word or phrase is offensive sure Let, well let's say you say something you make a joke which you just meant to be funny and like, and I know there's extremes we can take this to, but I, I think I've listened to both I've you and there. Eric a lot. And, you know, you might make a joke about yourselves or about others or someone who's in your situation, who's maybe lived your life. And your intent is to kind of pick fun at yourself, like self-deprecating humor. Mm -hmm. And if I were like, no, that really offended me. Does your intent matter at all? Um, because I really fear, I, I fear removing people's speech, which I often see happening, and well, I think there's this big... Yeah. Matter in what way, though? Yeah, that was, what I was going to say is the word matter, about whether things matter, um, is something that I jump on all the time because I think it's used too broadly. For example, when people say, oh, but without this, life doesn't matter. Um, because it does, it's composed of atoms. But also, um, the way that people use that is often just a reflection of what they care about and like. Um, you were enjoying that pun a lot. I'm, I'm happy <laughs> I did catch it, it yeah. but I don't know if I yeah, enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Like the flu. Um, but what I would say is I have also, with a, a personal friend of mine, run across this, and I think whether or not you attend it, intended to offend someone doesn't change how they feel. So in that regards, um, oh, but I didn't mean to offend you, um, can be looked at as, oh, but I didn't mean to hit your hand with a hammer. It still hurt. But it does matter if you're trying to evaluate, um, oh, is this a person that cares, right? So for example, if I were to make a joke about people that are, I don't know, bald or something, um, if I intended to offend, I don't know, do we know any bald people? No. Um, There's a couple. I, <laughs> yeah, if I had intended to honestly offend uh, Anthony just then, we would be in a different situation than the actual situation that just occurred, which was me attempting to make a joke, even though I think Anthony probably didn't mm. like that joke. So do you think maybe Anthony should look at, or at least in my mind, in an ideal world, People should should think about your intent. Like if somebody, if you make a joke about, like, I, I, I don't know, I've watched a bunch of your content, you'll make a, a sexuality joke, like Mr. Atheist will make a sexuality joke about himself, like his most recent video, and it's, it's kind of about himself. 
And do you think people should look at the intent? Like, should that weigh into people saying, or people shouldn't consider your intent at all when figuring out how they perceive it? How they perceive your statement or how they perceive you? Your statement, I think. Um, yeah. Let's go with your statement first. Let's okay. just go with the statement. Because When the they perceive your statement, should your intent matter? So I, I think I've I mean, run ramshot over you at least twice. So no, that's okay. I mean, I, th I think if I were in a situation where somebody were to tease me mm -hmm. for being bald or something, um, hmm. there, there may have been a time where I would be offended by that. But these days, there's not that much that people can say that offends me. I, 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 it takes, I don't know. I don't know what somebody could say, could say that, to, that might offend me. Um, whether Challenge their intent... accepted. <laughs> before the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. So, if even if they were intending to say it to hurt me, mm. I don't think that it would matter. It wouldn't yeah. matter to me. It really wouldn't. I, yeah. I, I'd, I'd be curious. I would honestly be curious why they would feel the need to try to say something that they th would think that would offend me or hurt me. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to the other side of that. If Matt Dillahunty was sitting beside you and he just happened to make a ball joke for no, no particular reason, would you maybe laugh with him and realize his intent and be like, oh, he's not... What would you think about that if Matt Dillahunty made one? I would probably laugh at it. Um, but even if somebody did it with a malicious intent, I really don't think that I would get offended. I'd be more curious why they were doing it. What is it... You know, why, why do you feel the need to try to say something that you think would actually insult me or or um, trigger me and maybe for a lack of a better word so yeah I, I would honestly find it curious and want to investigate what's bringing it on like maybe maybe I parked in their parking space and or, you know, yeah. there, maybe there's some other cause so I think it would it would inspire me to try to figure out well what did I do or what are they perceiving that I did that might cause them to want to say something to hurt me but um, so I guess maybe in a way like yeah I, well. I well, I was gonna say maybe, maybe the intent is somewhat interesting, but I wouldn't I wouldn't paint them with a broad brush to say they're doing it. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't paint the, any statement about bald people with a bald, uh, broad brush, <laughs> even if that would make painting someone who's bald easier because there's a lot more surface area. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> what, um, what I would say is it again. Yeah, that's it, offensive. <laughs> yeah, painters have much more important things to do. No, um, ah, it was terrible, even by my standards. Um, but what I would say is it kind of comes back to matters for what. So I think a lot of this comes up when people are talking about, well, there's the broader discourse, and if you um, continue to include X, Y, or Z in the, the discourse, whether you intend for it to be humorous and whether you intend for it not to negatively influence society, um, that doesn't always mean that your intent affects the actual outcome. Obviously, I well, don't know what specific example or examples that you've actually experienced you would bring up. Well, I'll throw one last thing at you guys that maybe this can be the last. I really appreciate your time with this and yeah. thank you for what you do. But let's take, for example, like, I make um, cupcakes for friends, and my intent is to give my friends something really nice, something really good, but for some reason, uh, there's, let's just say there's a, an issue with the flour that there's food poisoning, and I have food poisoning all my friends. And, and it's not due to any fault of my own, any negligence. Mm -hmm. It's some sort of food recall that we find out about a week later that no one could have seen coming. It's just, you know, a food poisoning issue that the whole country's dealing with. So the consequence of me making cupcakes for my friends, the intended consequence was to be nice to my friends, to show them gratitude, to further our friendship. Mm -hmm. But the consequence is, you know, they're, they're laid up for a week, they're in pain, and it's, one had to go to the hospital. So I heard one, I saw one person in the chat say, intent doesn't matter, consequences matter, that's what really matters. And I think the consequences, like, when you judge a person, I don't think I should be judged for the consequences of that because if we go by judging me for the consequences, I'm a mm -hmm. horrible person for making those cupcakes. But if we go by the intent of the cupcakes, I'm actually a nice person who got was the victim of consequences. These people are suffering because of me. But I think intent is really what should be judged in that instance. And that's where I, I go to the intent really matters. Like if you, yeah, I think that's my prime example right there. Where I, I think intent matters. 
I mean, one that I'm I'm a little taken aback because that's a perfect example is there's one thing to consider the intent and intent and another. So if they're judging you again, you intended to do something nice. Um, depending on whether or not it was a food recall or your cooking, they could certainly judge your skill or or lack thereof as far as cupcake baking. But um, the actual fact is they were sick, and so that is also something that matters. So for example, if you took a risk with your cooking where you knew that it was possible for them to be barf cupcakes or whatever, um, that <laughs> risk, even with the intent, would have to be weighed even if they were judging um, you and your judgment as far as decision making goes. It's a, it's a very sort of interesting um, philosophical question and I think it would make a perfect post on the Talk Heathen Reddit, which you can find at reddit.com slash r slash talk heathen. Um, are you willing well, to I, I follow up with the... Time. Yeah. Can, can I, can the viewers, fans, Redditors, hosts, co-hosts, guests, bump into you on, on Reddit about this? Because it's great, but I don't I might, think... I, I hop around discussion boards. I'm, I'm usually on, like, the Great Debate community, so... On, sorry, which community? Uh, the GDC, the Great Debate community. Shout ah, out to them. Okay. Shout out to them. Cool, thank you for your time. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling in, Adam. Yeah, it's sort of one of those things where it's like piecing out. It almost kind of comes down to example. Um, yeah, the examples, whole but. the whole sort of intent thing, like, like I was saying, um, even if somebody had a malicious intent to harm me, mm -hmm. uh, he kind of made a little bit of a switch there and going from like a verbal situation where somebody says something about your appearance as, and then he switched it to um, there's some sort of physical outcome. You know, I think that kind of changes it just a bit. Yeah, it makes what the outcome is more clear because what the outcome is of bringing this up in dialogue is a lot more difficult, nigh impossible to determine, right? Like fi figuring out, oh, okay, so even if you mm -hmm. have like a platform and it's not just a conversation with you and four friends, what it means to drive conversation to cupcakes rather than, I don't know, hate crimes or whatever. Well, okay, that one's actually pretty clear cut. But cupcakes rather than, for example, I don't know, candle manufacturing is interesting because it's sort of, it, you can talk about how, oh, it shifts focus and I think that cupcakes are more important but a conversation about candles, et cetera. But the actual effect of that individual person having that conversation isn't something I think can be reliably um, measured in an empirical way. I'm not sure. I don't really have much more to add to it. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I think, you know, there's probably more things that can be pulled out of it, but... Anyway, you ready for the next caller? Sure. Yeah, well, let's take... Max. Hey, uh, Max. From Kentucky. Hey, Max, how you doing? You're live with Jamie and Anthony. Hi, I'm doing great. Nice to talk with you. What's going on today? Yeah, what'd you want to talk about? Um, okay, thank you. Um, well... <laughs> When they asked me uh, earlier, my summary, I didn't, I didn't phrase it very well, but I guess the best way to talk about, bring it up is talk about a, a caller that you had last week. Um, I think her, it was Ruth Ann. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, and there was a lot of talk about, uh, uh, started off talking about babies. Does, does your God see children starving to death? And... Uh, Eric said, he made the point, does, does your God see them starving? Uh, yes. Does he have the power to fix it? Yes. And he's, his point was, then he is, he's either um, yeah. impotent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> impotent or uncaring. Impotent or uncaring. Uh, and yeah. I, I could be that he was mad is the third option. He's angry. Yeah, so it... To be clear, he's or apathetic, and I'm saying maybe he's just angry. Sure, but one, it's it's an interesting place to argue because there isn't sufficient reason to believe that there's a he there. But 
the proposition, oh no, there is a God that cares, and there is a God that could stop no, children uh, not from... That, not really that he cares. No, 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 that's the, that is the proposition that's being responded to. If the proposition was, does a God exist, was the proposition, and someone said, well, bad things happen, therefore no gods could possibly exist, that would be a bad argument, because you could have malevolent, evil God things. Um, which, again, I don't think there's sufficient reason to exist, but it sounds like that's kind of the point you were getting to. What is your explanation for it? Yeah. Max? Oh, hang on. For, um, looks like you were put back on hold. Um, Why would oh, he be... Sorry, oh, we, sorry, we, we Max. I, I think uh, somehow you ended up back on hold. Well, what, um, what I'm... Sorry, did I somewhat get at the point you were making, which is just saying that bad things happen doesn't mean that there necessarily isn't a God that lets them happen? Because I agree with that. Bad things happen, and so the proposition, oh no, there's a God that wouldn't let bad things happen, has direct evidence against it, which is bad things happen. But if you want to talk about a God with an unknown nature, um, that's kind of a different conversation. All right, well... It it's unknown. If you're following the Bible, if you, just from the perspective of someone who's a Christian who believes the Bible, I, I think it's not unknown. The Bible is clear that he is very malevolent and angry and jealous and wrathful. I mean, I, I can agree that that is a a reasonable conclusion to come to if you uh, believe that the God character described in the Bible exists. I was going to say, it, it's, it's, in, in my view, this is almost sort of spinning our wheels a little bit. Yeah. The more important question is, is, does a God exist? Does the God, is the God real? Yeah, does yeah. the God exist? And then all the other stuff is, is he good? Is he bad? How does he make these moral pronouncements when it comes to kids? This is all secondary in my view. Um, I, I don't know even where you stand, whether you believe that there's a God or not, but I think, I think the, most, the, the more important issue here is, is the God real? What is your view on that question? Is the God real? Right, yes. Mm -hmm. The God is real? Yes. Okay. So whether he's a, a good God or a vicious God, it's almost, it's almost not important, right? Like, the, the bigger issue is, is how you're concluding that he's real. Do you want to spend a little time? I, I think it is, it is important. I, I would just clarify and say it is important if the first part of that, which is a God is real, can be demonstrated. So um, I, I arguing about a hypothetical we're, we're God is different than arguing about a God that's been reasonably demonstrated to exist. Right. And the first part, well, like, the, it's not... Put the cart before the horse. Can, right? I, can I try it this way with a question? Yeah. Um, okay. What I'm wondering, Max, is would you be less sure that the God exists if it was an evil God? Or if, if there was some demonstration that the, the description of the God was evil? If there, were, if there was no ambiguity at all and this is an evil God, would you be less certain that he existed or more or the I same? I don't think there is any ambiguity. He is an evil God. I, as an example, if you're following the Bible, the God from the Bible, uh, uh, hold on, this, uh, let's see. With, with all respect, that didn't answer my... It's just it's visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Mm. So uh, that's basically, that's evil. Like, we're, you know, if you're punishing, uh, you know, your great-great-great-grandchildren for the a sin of the father or... Mm -hmm. well, their great great grandfather. Yeah. That's evil. Like that's not very ambiguous at all. All right. My my question though is whether this is an evil god, whether it's being described as an evil god or a good god, does it have any bearing on whether the god exists or not? Whether it's been described as good or bad, good or evil? Uh, I think if someone was arguing that there was a good benevolent god, then yes, that's kind of torn apart by the evils of the world. So that's not as believable. Only a, a malevolent God is believable. I mean, that, it's interesting because what you're talking about is, well, taking a look at um, reality, the world around us, and coming to the conclusion that it doesn't comport with a benevolent 
God is interesting. So what I'm wondering is, what is the? But I, I'm not the only one who's done that. You all. Have oh yeah, that. yeah. I mean, I'm saying you know, either God is apathetic or impotent. Yeah. We've all made that same or, conclusion. Or malevolent. I mean, part, part of the thing is, generally, when people call in, they want to talk about how the God they believe is good and is doing good things. But really, there's three well, parts of that. Good. It's a, it's a, a more of a, a might is right argument. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, if he's good, if he's going to burn you for all eternity for not following him. From my perspective, mm -hmm. I don't really. It doesn't really bother me whether this is a good or bad God. What's important is how you're determining that this God is real. That's really my, my area of interest. I can entertain the discussion, I suppose, like what would be better to have, a good God or a bad God or an apathetic God, but... Uh, how do I determine that the God is real? Uh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. That would be a more interesting conversation. Yeah, I think so. Right. What's the basis for okay, that? Okay, okay. Uh, well, I don't have conclusive evidence. There, there's a few things. I've, I was raised is a like a fundamental Bible believing Christian this it's basically their belief they they don't they're not so public about it because it doesn't really draw a crowd in but God is angry with everyone and wrathful it's, but uh if the God is true so hold on a second things, well things that make me believe in it just yeah yeah that's that's the, the more evidence of the Bible I know that's not great evidence I, I don't have great evidence but it's like well my it's question like is, a, what yeah. evidence do you have at all? Um, yeah, what, what would you say is the best piece of evidence that brings you to a high degree of certainty that your God is real? The best piece of evidence, it's, it's not evidence, it's just information about the God is the Bible. I'm, mm. I'm not saying I have good evidence. I don't think there is good evidence. It's just uh, like a, a Pascal's wager, do you want to be wrong? Right, like, yeah, if, if the God was real, I certainly wouldn't want to be mistaken on it. I'd like to believe in the God. Mm -hmm. So, because like, right. this particular God, the way it's described, the penalty for not believing in it, or if it's, if it's real mm -hmm. and you don't believe in it, uh, it's pretty brutal. So, yeah, um, if it's real, I would certainly want to, want to understand it. Mm -hmm. So what is it about, what is it about the, the Bible that makes you think it's the best evidence that you have to support the claim that there's really a God? It's just the one that I'm most familiar with. I, I'm aware that another religion's God could be correct, and I'm, I'm doing the wrong things. I'm just saying it, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't matter how, how unreasonable it is if you're wrong. You, I mean, like, you got to pick one. Wouldn't it? your best. I mean, to be clear, wouldn't it then be most reasonable for a person to pick the most malevolent, terrible God idea to believe in? Additionally, how do you determine which God ideas are in that category? So I can think of um, a God idea right now. Would you then add that to your betting pool as far as which God idea you would bet on? I would guess. For that. the God that you, you just make one up? That I have a, that I, a God idea that I talk about right now. Um, if you propose, like, some parameters for the God, he does this, he does this, yeah, yes. Not if you were saying, like, specifically, you know, he lives in my ear and he's two foot tall. Not your specific claims, but if you just describe other attributes for the good, the God could have been like this, then yes. Okay, so it seems like you're giving ideas about God, the kind of past that I don't think you would give other ideas about other claims Because about other God. ideas don't have such a high risk. Well, the problem is that they do. Um, so people believing, for example, um, that uh, there is one master race and that the Jewish people must be eradicated is something that you can believe based on that. And then you can believe that um, right, the right. quote unquote, that's, that's and you can go down that path and it is demonstrable what will happen. It's not, it's, that is horrible. Genocide. It is. It is it's entirely horrible, but eternity. that is an idea that... One death is never as high a risk as an eternity. Okay, so... No matter how painful and horrible your life was and how senseless your death is, so, that's never as risky as eternity. 
It, it's true. There, I, it occurs to me that there is a hard limit on the kinds of things that you are quote unquote, betting on about reality, which is whatever you happen to hear about or think of. Well, it sounds like uh, uh, whatever is the most familiar to you yeah. uh, was, was the kind of, that's, right, that's, that, right. that, that, well, that's, that's the one that got my attention. So what I'm wondering is, that, uh, can I just finish this question? Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, no, no problem. What I'm wondering though is if there was a completely different God that you were more familiar with, would you be calling a show and professing that you were confident that that God existed? Uh, it's, it's, it's not that I'm more, I know I said familiar, it's not that, that's the one I was, the examples I'm using, but I, I try and find, it's not like I, this, is, I, this is what I've raised in, this is what it mm -hmm. is. I have to try and study stuff all the time. This is why, a reason why I watch your show. I want as many, as many inputs as possible. As, mm -hmm. So, yes, like, and I, yes. Yes, what? Mm -hmm. If I was more familiar with another, another religion, if I was raised in Islam, I would probably call you and say the, probably the same things. The God of Islam is also cruel and malevolent. Mm -hmm. But again, we're the, kind of the focusing. The isn't really important. It's just the God. Yeah, what, what I'd really like to keep focused on is not whether this is a good God or a bad God, but whether the God exists. And it sounds like what you're saying is that because you're more familiar with the Christian God, that is, that is kind of the reason why, it's, why, you're, why you have a high degree of confidence that this is true. And if you, were, if you were more confident, I'm sorry, not more confident. A high degree of confidence that what is true? That the God is real. Right. Right. Because I'm more familiar with. Right. And if you were more familiar with uh, Allah, the, the Muslim God, that you might be calling okay. a show and explaining that you're confident that that God is real. Oh, I'm not confident that that God is that, just that a creator that has the power, it, something that has the power over an afterlife, over, over anyone's existence after this life. If you were unfamiliar with any gods whatsoever, would you be an atheist? If I never heard of the, the concept of any gods whatsoever. Yeah, would you be, would you have a high degree of confidence that there were no gods? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about if there was a god or not, but yeah. Okay. So is your familiarity with Christianity, that seems like that's the big thing that's driving all this. If you were unfamiliar with it, you wouldn't be confident that it, the god was real. No, um, if I was totally unfamiliar with it, if all I had heard is someone came up to me and said, I've never been or any knowledge of religion and said, by the way, did you know everything is created? There's a God. He wants you to act a specific way. He wants, he, uh, um, that, that's enough. Okay. And that, that would be enough to get, to start, that probably wouldn't be enough to start thinking, but if, and then another person came up to me and said it, like, it doesn't have to be specifically the God of the Bible. Just if the concept right, is interesting right, right. to me. Right, right, right. So I want to ask one more question and then I'll turn over to Jamie here and let me try to phrase this. And if, if you don't understand it, let me know. But my question okay. is, how does familiarity with a claim have any impact on the claim being true? Whether I claim that, whether it, I, well, it, it I, wouldn't, even if I was totally ignorant and there was a God, it would, it, that wouldn't matter. If I totally was a hundred percent confident that there was no God, if there was, my familiarity with it has no bearing on it. I agree. I didn't exactly. know whether you wanted to... Uh, no, oh. that I kind of wanted just to pause and let that sink in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I w I'm with you. Like, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I was raised to not believe in any God, I was, I was unfamiliar with any, any God claims, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that there are no gods. And conversely, if I was raised in a, in a Christian family and I was very familiar with the text and I can recite verses and all this stuff, my familiarity really has no bearing on the truth of the claim that the God is real. So if, if familiarity is one of the biggest and best pieces of evidence that you have, yet it can lead people to believe things that are not true, why do you have a high degree of confidence that the Christian God is real? I don't have a high degree of confidence. 
I have enough of a degree of confidence to be worried about it. Well, so I would, I would repeat mm. that basically the same form of the question is, if the epistemology or if the reasoning that you use to come to a conclusion is something that can come to a completely contradictory conclusion to the one that you hold. It can be used to come to the conclusion that there are nine gods or 12 gods or no gods or that numbers aren't a real thing. Why would you use that method of reasoning to come to a sufficient confidence to be worried about something? Why would I use the information I have to come to conclusions? No. So the, the method that you're using is familiarity with an idea affects... That's as, how much knowledge I have about it. Yeah, um, yes, but... Can I, can I take that's a stab at... That's determine yeah. everything is the information that I have about it. I want to take a stab at... Re so yes, familiarity with an idea is how I... Well, what, what I would say is not all information is equivalent. So I actually have a kind of... Um, pet thing that I do in my spare time, which is familiarize myself with... Uh, Pokemon. Well, not, I mean, not, no, actually, my, I'm mostly ignorant, but with conspiracy theories, many of which are entirely contradictory. Should the more of a person's off-the-wall manifesto about how marshmallow people control the world affect just by hearing the idea and hearing it more, should I then say, well, the more times I hear it and the more I listen to this person, Therefore, regardless of what they're saying, I should give that idea more weight. No, you, you still have to use your brain okay. to decide what is, what is reasonable, what is right. You, well, to, it's not just if I learn more about this, it's probably more true. The more I study on something, the more it's true. Right. So the, no. the reason that I said that is it very much sounds to me, and I think I may be mishearing you then, or, or maybe I'm just stating it in different words, that what you're saying is, well, I'm more familiar with the Christian God, and because I'm more familiar with it, I'm sufficiently confident to be worried about it, on the one hand, that initially in this call, but that just now what you've said is something equivalent to, well, it doesn't matter how familiar you are with an idea, that doesn't mean that you should give it more weight regardless of the idea. So, Well, because I think the Christian God, the Christian God is more believable than marshmallow man ruling the universe. That's the part about, you know... I don't know how to quantify that, to but decide. what it sounds like you've just said is, okay, well, it's not... What I'm hearing you say is it's not your familiarity necessarily with the Christian God, but the actual idea itself, which seems to be a different position than what we were initially talking about. Am I hearing you correctly on that? I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry. Can I, can I attempt to... I want, to, I want to try to repeat back what I think you're saying, mm -hmm. okay? And if this isn't it, it Max, please correct us. Mm -hmm. But I think, okay. what, I think what you're saying is that, yes, I understand that being familiar with a claim does not mean that the claim is true. I think, I think you were on board with that. Yeah. And, th and then I think the second part of that that you were saying is that, however, the penalty for not believing the claim is so high that it makes sense to believe it anyways. Uh, yes, because belief is so small a role. To believe, to be saved by the Christian God, you don't have to live a specific lifestyle or do anything or have any, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's, say, yeah, I think it's reasonable and that's it, you're done. Well, so, so yeah, here, it's, here's, it's like a tiny payment into a huge risk. Well, let me ask you, do you want to believe this belief? Do you want to believe this claim because you have good reasons or because you're afraid not to believe it or that it just makes sense to believe it even though it might not be true, it might just be the safer option or, or something else? I don't want to pigeonhole you to those. To be, to be afraid not to believe it. Could you be af could you be afraid to believe something that's not true? Could I be afraid to believe? Would I be afraid of having a untrue belief? You mean? 
No, I. I right, let me, can I just refer? It? Okay. I was going to say. Oh, go on, go I ahead. think what you're you're saying is, is it possible to believe something that is not true because you are afraid? Yes. Okay. And what I'm hearing you say is you believe in the Christian God because you are afraid. Yes. Do you have any reason of being afraid if the Christian God isn't real? If, if there's another angry God out there, yes. <laughs> I was going to say, well, snakes. But, <laughs> right, like um, if, you, if, you, if, we, if you were more familiar with Odin or something like that, it, it, yeah, if you were God. more familiar with a completely different God, I think maybe we covered this any earlier. God, the God doesn't matter. Any God. Any yeah. just all-powerful being. Well, actually, I, I'm not sure because a moment ago it sounded like you were saying that part of the reason for your belief was the fear of the consequences. And now it sounds like you're saying any God, but there can be God ideas that don't, that don't have, have a punishment for belief. Right. Well, then, yes, any God hmm. that has a way that he wants you to act. Okay. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, maybe just shift gears just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate you know, you're being so blunt and upfront with us. I, yeah. think I think it's great. I want to commend really you for refreshing. that. Thank you. Yeah, it really is refreshing to talk to a theist who's willing to kind of honestly explore this with mm -hmm. two atheists here. <laughs> two heathens. Thanks. Um, You're uh, good listeners. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. I uh, kind of <laughs> lost where I was going to go with my second part. I guess, um, well, uh, yeah, keep, you know, maybe well, keep what, talking. What, what, It'll come back to me. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. What, what I was going to say is right now you believe in a God idea because you're afraid of the consequences. Because if there is an infinite afterlife that is under the control of a malevolent God, you know, it's the, well, I'm going to give this person all of the money in my wallet because they have a gun to my head. So even if I have a thousand dollars in my wallet, that is worth less than my being alive. Is a metaphor for you saying, well, if I believe that this malevolent God exists, and I'm wrong, that penalty is less than the penalty of inciting this malevolent God to punish me for eternity. If, is that... Well, if somebody has a gun to my head, that's, I'm out a thousand dollars. If I just yeah. believe there's a God, I'm not out anything. I, I disagree with that point, but that's not really where I want to go yet. There is, a, there is an idea of God that is a God that values reason and skepticism and despises credulity as sin. And that God, with its uh, greater than infinite reason and logic, whose understanding of the concept of understanding is more than our minds could ever understand, can inflict a punishment that is more than infinite if we are credulous. This idea of God creates a greater idea of risk than the God of the Bible. If the basis for the ideas we consider is, forgive me for using a word as blunt as flimsy, is as flimsy as whatever idea a human can come up with and tell other people about. You can come up with 10 gods an hour for a day and just have an unbelievable amount of math to try and calculate, well, I will determine what is true based on betting. I don't think that that's a really good way necessarily of trying to figure out what is real. Right? So for example, if I'm trying to determine whether or not it's safe for me to cross a street, I might look at the crosswalk and I will certainly look both ways before I cross the street, but what I won't do to determine whether or not a car is coming is think about whether or not I'm late. That might prompt me to take a risk, but it won't prompt me to believe that there is no car. If that makes sense. I, I have a quick question to ask you, Max, if that's okay. Or did you want to respond to Jamie there? Uh, no, go ahead. I wasn't sure. Well, yeah, so if I can I state my conclusion more clearly, if I say, well, I won't cross this street because 
it is better for me to never cross this street in my entire life for 80 years than to risk my life ending at age 25 because I've chosen to cross the street now. Regardless of how far down each way of the street I can see or whether or not I can determine that the street is blocked off by a police barricade. Would you agree that that would be an unreasonable approach to take to whether or not to cross a street? Yes. Right. I, so, I'm not, I, I, it's not that it's reasonable. I'm not saying this is a great reason to believe it. It's just it's not you didn't not get to cross the street there you're not losing anything you are so it there's no so what what there's no harm the, and it's there's no harm in this belief it's not good to have false beliefs but it's, there's no harm in it it's, it's worse really to good. have a bad way of determining what to believe because throughout the rest of your life you will encounter ideas and conclusions and either believe them or not believe them. And if the method that you use to determine what is true is wildly unreliable, then you will end up believing things that are not true and end up not believing things that are true. And the less a person understands about reality, um, the more likely they are for a reality that they don't understand to harm them. And realities that they don't understand to harm other people because of their actions. What I'm trying to get at, and I'm doing so I, I, kind I of obtusely, there's is... two different sets of reasonings, of epistemologies, for the world around why? me, the ideas I encounter, and then supernatural, otherworldly ideas that there can be no evidence for because if they're supernatural. So why would you come to a conclusion at all? Generally speaking, or about no, no, no. I mean, if there, if you cannot evaluate evidence for a claim, why would you confidently come to a conclusion about that claim at all? Uh, I know this isn't a great answer, but because of the complexity of the claim, it's not something that you made up on the fly while we we're talking. It's a whole history of. A religion well yes but what you've said is if there's a claim and it's supernatural and you cannot evaluate the evidence for it you treat that claim about things that exist in reality differently than you would treat a claim about something that exists in reality that you could examine so right now yeah. I can claim to know things that are happening in you know Pyongyang with no evidence, and as far as I'm aware, you do not have a way of evaluating uh, my claim that there are unicorns there right now. I have a few ways of investigating. I have information. I, to, I feel like the really State Department of the United States may want to employ you, but um, the can, can I jump in? Yeah, here yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting okay. in the weeds. Yeah, and this has been going on for a little bit, a little mm -hmm. while. Um, maybe my last question to you. What I'm curious mm -hmm. is, is Max, if, if you no longer feared the outcome of not believing, let's say you got over it. There are some atheists who they eventually get over it. Sometimes we struggle with it, even after the yeah. fact. But if you were to overcome your fear of not believing in this God, would you still believe in it? No. All right. Okay. And then actually, um, I yeah. appreciate your honesty on that. Yeah, thank you. I, I, again, this is a, a fantastic call, and I'm, I'm glad you called in. And I'm about to ask if you'll call in again next week. Um, mm, that would be really great if you could call back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I, I know it's not a good reason to fear. It's um, I, have you ever heard of PBI, Pensacola Bible Institute, Dr. Peter Ruckman? I'm afraid not. No. We have uh, some hands. Okay, um, yeah. He's he's died a few years ago. He was a uh, known for being really uh, just hateful, really, just very vile, um, a King James only, mm. but just a really vile, uh, anyway, he was also known for, he was a really good artist, he was a chalk artist, and um, every Sunday during his sermon, he would draw a, a, like, a, like a billboard size chalk drawing, 
and it, it was a lot of hellfire sermons and um, a lot of drawings of people just burning in hell and descriptions and it, it was like a game for the kids whoever could ask him first if they could have the drawing got the drawing and we had a few of them and it's I, I know that's not a good reason like you said if I could get past that fear I, mm. I would I would I would let it go mm. I think mm. he's a horrible vile god I you know what I'm wondering Very is, much. you know what I'm wondering, Max, if there was somebody in your similar situation watching this and they're struggling with this fear of, of eternal torment and it's the one last thing holding them into this belief, what advice do you think that you would give them for the first step that they can take in greatly reducing their fear? Have you ever thought about that? What would you tell them? Um... Well, what I have done to somewhat alleviate my fear is investigate atheist claims. Watch, watch your shows. Yeah, that's good advice. Thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> well, I didn't mean it just for like the promotional part of it, but like, uh, comment, and subscribe. I, I mean, I think uh, like for myself personally, watching the atheist experience. Mm. And then newer shows like yours has been really great in coming to grips with my atheism and my lack of belief. And even though I, I used to be a believer as a little kid, um, I was always kind of skeptical. But every once in a while, I'm like, mm, that whole fear, you know, that whole hell thing, I really hope that that's not real. I'm, I'm you know, you know, have I really thought this through? And then I remind myself that I don't have a good reason to be afraid of it. And, and shows like, like this one and the others, I think probably would be a really good thing to mm -hmm. keep. keep. Keep surrounding yourself with other points of view. And I think, uh, I think that might be really helpful. Another thing that you might want to consider, there is a wonderful organization called Recovering From Religion. Mm. And you can go to recoveringfromreligion.org, I believe it is. And one of, the, one of the, the biggest topics that their agents get, they have trained agents that can talk to you on the phone, or through text, one of the biggest things they get is from theists and atheists who are still afraid of hell. And they have wonderful resources for you. So, so um, I guess maybe just to kind of wrap this up, keep, keep being honest with yourself, keep questioning, and seek out other places of support, you know, shows like this and, and maybe even something like Recovering from Religion. And I really do hope that you call back. I think that it would be fantastic yeah. if you can call back and we can, you know, track your progress. Maybe, maybe you can find a good reason to believe that this God is real other than, well, I'm afraid to not believe in this God. Mm -hmm. All right. That, thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you. And, and Max, please do call in or at least email and, and connect with us on social media because this has been a fantastic and refreshing conversation. And like Anthony said, that is kind of... Um, that was one of the initial driving factors of having this show is being able to talk to someone not just the one week but a second week and a third week to see what uh, you know effect the conversations have and to mm -hmm. be able to have those longer not one-off conversations so please um, if you can find the time next Sunday or literally any time during the week to email this uh, would yeah. be fascinating and not to put too much okay. not to put too much pressure, pressure on you not to yeah. put too much pressure on you however <laughs> i do think that this dialogue mm -hmm. could be very useful for people who are struggling with the exact same thing that you're struggling with so i, I really appreciate yeah. that you called and you were willing to honestly examine this topic mm -hmm. with us and and it was refreshing it was really mm -hmm. great and i wish you all the best okay uh thank you guys yeah Thank you for calling in. I'll next. probably talk to you later. I hope hey. so. Right. Bye, Max. Can we debrief after that a little bit? Yeah. What yeah. Did, what did you think? I thought that that was a fantastic call. Yeah. Um, I hope that it's the first of a few calls like that because I feel like um, the uh, Max seems interested in thinking about these things. I hope if Max decides not to call or, or communicate with the show again, that they do reach out to recoveringfromreligion.org, mm. which is an excellent resource. Yeah, I, I think, et cetera, et cetera. if you remember, yeah. the way that it started, we were going to get spend all this time talking about is the God good or bad. Yeah. That, that's, that's really, 
yes, it might be an interesting thing to talk, talk about. about. Yeah. However, what's what's more important mm -hmm. is is the God real? Why do you think that it's true? What's your best piece of evidence? Yeah. Uh, it was familiar to her. That's it was the most familiar, mm -hmm. and she kept bringing up the penalties that come with not believing. And, that and would time, come with not believing. And time if and the God exists. It's the yeah right. Yeah yeah right. Uh, and if, if if perhaps you were. That's, you know, if you, this may have been the question I was thinking about before, but if you were more familiar with a completely different God where there was no penalty for not believing, would you, oh, be, would you, be, more apt that, to, would you yeah. be more apt to believe in that God? Would you be calling a show stressed out if your God had no penalty for not believing? Mm -hmm. uh, it might be an interesting question that she could ask herself, but no, she, was, she yeah. was very, very honest, and she said, if, if fear wasn't involved in this decision, mm -hmm. I wouldn't believe in this God. Yeah. That, that, that kind of tells you all that you yeah. need to know. It also very much highlights why we do the show and why we do what we do, is that there are people who are in this situation, situations like it, and situations that are worse, because from a young age, they were taught to be afraid, right. and in a, uh, you know, hateful doom god that issues doom for eternity from a doom palace on its doom, doomy, doom, doom, as fans of um, Invader Zim will appreciate me saying, hopefully. Um, but I, I feel like I have been reminded to plug the Patreon, but I feel like plugging it right now seems very very self-serving, like, I think you, there's you doom to, in you, the world. You need, to take, the month, you need to take advantage of those opportunities when they come yeah. up, and I, I would say, yeah, if, if you can support this show, I'll Please, do it yeah. since I'm not, part well, of the, I'm not part of the ACA, so let me, yeah. <laughs> get, donate some money to these folks. They're giving up their Sundays. They're here all the time. I was here two hours mm -hmm. earlier. This place was packed with workers. They care about what they're mm -hmm. doing. They care about calls like Max, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they're, they're, everyone says they want to do something to help. These guys are actually helping. Mm -hmm. So please donate. P put up the link. There and it is. And we have made it easy for you to do something, which is empower us to do the heavy lifting. <laughs> a dollar and honestly, a day when, keeps Jesus and Satan away. When you get a caller like that, the lifting is very light. She was yeah, doing all the that lifting. that was fantastic. We were listening and hearing her and bouncing a few questions off of her and trying yeah. to repeat back what we thought she was saying, and she was being honest. Yeah, was when you have that, yeah. you're going to have a great conversation with... with uh, yeah. Hey, I, maybe I can plug something next. I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> please look into street epistemology. This, yeah. this is largely what we do. We, we tend to... Have, have conversations Dialogues like that. with people where they're being honest and we try to make them feel comfortable and help them reflect on their belief, just like you saw there with mm -hmm. Max. And, and we have hundreds of video examples on that. There's the playlist right there. Mm -hmm. There are people around the world doing these types of conversations with strangers on the street, or they just organically happen. Yeah. This, this playlist is videos where we're initiating talks, but you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. What I would say is, but wait, there's more. If you liked that call, go to, to the link below, where there's an entire playlist of fantastic calls. Featuring and then you know, whatever you would love that playlist too. We, we talk to people not only about God mm. But we also talk to atheists who are hundred percent sure there is no God mm. And, yeah, and we, we question them. How could you be so sure there's no God or we mm -hmm. talk about karma ghosts? Because yeah. voter registration uh, and anything yeah beliefs basically because I'm not here because I'm dedicated to a conclusion right really the reason that I'm here and the things that I do that I'm do is that I think that it's important for human beings to have a reliable way of evaluating reality because not only do we only get one life, but also there's only one reality and watch out because it can kill you. Here's, here's the other little, little put a, put a <laughs> not to bring, Not to bring it down. <laughs> Let me put a pin on this. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I might uh, open uh, it up. Uh, Even if you are believing something be and it's, it's based on a faulty, unreliable foundation, it doesn't mean that your belief isn't true. It That's still could true. be true. Yeah. You could have stumbled your way into a true, true belief. Yeah. However, should you be really confident that that belief is true if you discover that it really, if it's based on, mm -hmm. if it's based on, it's the most familiar to me. It's not really the most reliable process, no. right? And we, yeah. we, we kind of explore that with that caller. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean that this God isn't real. However, the time to believe that the God is real yeah. is when there's evidence to back it up. Right, yeah, and, and you, to be and clear, you... good evidence, reliable evidence. So one of the things that I didn't get to, that maybe we'll get to next week or on our social media um, links in the description below, 
um, is imagine that you're talking to a member of a cult who has lived in maybe one building or maybe on one compound for their entire life, and they are 30 years old. And the only thing they are familiar with is that um, cult leader, for the, for the sake of ease, the name of the cult leader is cult leader, whatever. I we'll have creativity, it. it's not here. Um, That's okay. is, You're very creative. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. Oh, stop. I've seen your stop. shorts, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded kind of weird. No, yeah. um, your, your exterior shorts that you wear. <laughs> he likes plaids. I kind of wore my shirt you know, as a tribute to yeah. you today. Oh, yeah. thank you. And it's red, white, and blue. Yeah, and that, that's the second thing. America. Um, but what I'm saying is all that that person is familiar with is an idea that I think we could find unreliable because cult leader is a human being and is mortal and can die. And so, for example, if that cult leader is dead and it's confirmed, for, for example, you watched them die, you know they're dead, and this person believes, no, they are eternal, they live forever. You are witnessing a person who is believing something, and not just believing something because they're familiar with it, they are not questioning, they're not doubting, they're not evaluating that belief. They may also be afraid of not believing it. Well, certainly, because the, to them, their identity and acceptance and happiness is entirely dependent, psychologically, on believing that this is true. So it doesn't even come to a cogent fear, it's just, it's literally the only thing that they can understand as existence. And being unbelievably worried about having an entire worldview shattering doesn't require um, words to, you know, really to, uh, explain and, and understand necessarily. But what I would emphasize is Max sounded like they were, despite this, what I would say is not great reason for believing, they are not letting that reason stop them from thinking. And that is the most important thing. The more you know, rainbows, et cetera. I know we're focusing on Max a lot here. <laughs> yeah, that and we should move well, on to the next but, caller. It, uh, um, well, I admire your bravery for doing mm -hmm. what you're doing in the face of the fear. And mm -hmm. if you can overcome the fear, you're going to probably overcome the belief. And there's a community of people out there for you who have mm -hmm. gone through it, and there are resources, and you can you can reach out to us. Mm -hmm. I know Jamie keeps giving the email, and you can <laughs> you can reach out to me on Twitter or yeah, yeah. on social media. I'm very accessible. Yeah. And we'll put the links for those in the description below. Actually, I think your Twitter handle is just like at... Magna Bosco. At Magna Bosco. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's what not is yours? Peter Ma it's not Peter Magna Bosco or whatever. Your but, rational um, doubt or what is it? A no, Unbelievable, that, fantastic skepticism? Wait, no, that's the opposite. Underscore well, almost, yeah. doubt? Re reason, doubt underscore... No, re uh, reason underscore evidence. As in reason underscored by evidence is a reliable... That's too long. You should change that. Yeah, but like I... Jay know. Boone? Can you go with Jay Boone? Probably. Jeez. I don't know. I'm just teasing. Um, I could do something else. I don't know. I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't change this shit all the time. Whatever. Um, oh, my no. name is misspelled or something. Oh, oh is, is it? Wait, I can't tell. I think that's the... There we go. It looked like an H to me. Uh, I and have that's how inside. reliable the human brain is. Skepticism. We, can't, we brought it full circle. Win. Full Dude. circle. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Are we so, doing more calls? When do we wrap this yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We're, we're, we're taking more calls. I, a couple okay. of them dropped, and I think it's because they thought we were done taking calls. And then I No, I think it was because they but, realized the call with Max was so good, they couldn't live up to it. <laughs> that's probably why All they right. dropped. No so pressure we have, we have an to open our phone next line. caller. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got three. Bring it on. Uh, believer or non, there's, there's no that. That and, ooh, it may almost be two, but... Um, they can have this room back when they drag my still alive and unharmed body out of here, not by force. Which they won't do, because they're nice. That being got said... Matt and Phil showing up soon for the next show, right? Well, Phil's still here. Yeah, well, I, you know, it's 2.30. Their show doesn't start for well, a while. we got time. we got lots yeah. of time. Yeah, we're going to... Yeah. Well, we're, um, I'm planning on going an hour over time, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't think I've ever seen you nervous before. That well, because <laughs> I, I have to pick up my daughter, so um, I can't stay too long. But, you know, mm -hmm. I, we could probably yep. squeeze in a few yep. more calls, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think um, one of the things they're trying to get us to do is start doing after show, which is mm. not live, but we definitely want to take your call. So I think 
Um, wait, wait a second. It's not live, but you still take the calls. We, do, we so you don't, don't broadcast. We don't broadcast it live, but we record it and release it later. Oh. Patreon content. Ooh. Oh Speaking man. Speaking of Patreon, I'm Patreon. a Patreon. I'm a Patreon of your show. Yeah. I don't bam. give you. I don't give you all that much money, but I, well, I throw you a few bucks. Slightly less. Yeah. I should probably disclose that before I came on your show or something. Is there some I mean, like legal? I don't know. No. I, I mean, give you like people are like, oh, he month. bought his way onto the show, and then depending on <laughs> depending on <laughs> that's who a pretty you low are, bar to me. <laughs> depending on who you who you are and how much money you get, no, um, <laughs> we're not hurting that bad. Um, uh, wow, that that went all over the place, but um, yeah, yeah. Let's more. take uh, let's take Rob in Portland, Oregon. Hey, Rob. Hello, guys. Hello, Hello. Rob. Portland. How are you doing? Great, it's sunny and about 70. God uh, bless you. <laughs> uh, what anyway, did you want to talk about today? A, well, I've had a stroke, so if I say oh. something you don't understand, just ask me. I'm sorry to hear that. It would probably be helpful if you just gave us your question, you know, take your time, and then we can uh, try to respond to it. Yeah. So, yeah if you want to just kind of... Anthony, this is your essay student in Portland, Oregon. We've contacted each other on email. Ah, okay. Me? Yeah. Or, Are, did you say I, Anthony? Yeah. Okay. You've emailed me before? I have. I'm your essay uh, student up here in Portland. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for emailing me. Do you want to talk about the same topic or something different? No, um, I was very sick and in the hospital for two months. Mm -hmm. I was in a coma for two and a half weeks at that time. Since I've gotten out of the hospital, all I hear from people is, it's a miracle from God. You're not going to be alive. Uh, this is mm. from the Lord. Uh, this is all the signs you need that God is real. Yeah. I was a believer for 38 years before becoming an atheist about three years ago. So most of my friends and family are Christian. Mm. And what's your question, sir? Anyway, well, it drives me nuts that they try to say this a miracle. This would have been a miracle if I would have been in one day and the next day I hopped up and was ready to go home. A miracle doesn't, two months in the hospital is not a miracle, it's a nightmare. Mm. What do you tend to respond with when they say you should be grateful because you've experienced this wonderful miracle? How do you tend to respond to it? Uh, I'm an atheist. I don't believe that. What do you What do you tell them specifically? Do you just Do you just nod your head and say thank you, or do you Do you look at it as an opportunity to question why they think that that's true or something else? God, uh, I've got to say something. Uh, when I hear that, I can't just let it go. What do you tend to respond with? Um, I really tend to go back to read epistemology because that's what I've been praying in. And um, mm. it's not only is it effective, but I really, really like it. Awesome. Mm. The non-confrontational aspect. I love the endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just turn around and say, look, why do you think this is a miracle? Mm -hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. do, do they tend to get threatened by that by that response? Do, do they usually yeah. engage with you or do they shut it down? Some do, some don't. I don't know why I'm talking louder. I kind of go free <laughs> now. I, I kind of go by now who I can talk to and who I can. Okay. Yeah. Well, good for you for wanting to engage with them and question them a little bit as far as what they believe, yeah. why, and how they're so sure. 
That's the whole point of SE. And you being in Portland, I, I, may, I may have missed it at the start, but there is a meetup group. I don't know if they still meet. They might. There's a, there's a street epistemology specific meetup group in Portland. Mm. There are a few more. Most of that is all, most of it is online. There, there are Facebook yeah. groups and there's a Reddit. There's, a, what's the other one? Discord? Uh, yeah. Discord, yeah, probably. Facebook group. Okay, good. And yeah. I also started my own street epistemology page really okay mm. uh well if you wouldn't mind emailing me a link to that yeah. i'll be sure to tweet it out yeah i i would say uh, that, thank you for calling in and, and good for you for uh, wanting to engage with them because not everyone would um particularly if they're especially if they're hospital. being insulted yeah you know like but to, like I, I, would, I, I would be a little this kind of goes back to the whole can you get offended by yeah by, does not it everyone would be non-confrontational after someone tried to start a confrontation with them um <laughs> But I, th I think it's great that you're kind of setting aside, mm -hmm. you know, maybe being angry with them or snapping at them mm -hmm. and wanting to engage with them. I think if more people did that and they, they were being as honest as Max was, I think mm -hmm. this world would be a much better place. So mm -hmm. I think oh, it... I, I agree 100%. Well, good, sir. Well, thank you yeah. for calling. Email me yeah. or, or message me on Facebook, I guess, if you're on Facebook. And I'll, I'll be sure to tweet out a link to your group. Yeah, I will say there. Um, we're gonna have to wrap up the live portion of our show pretty quickly. If the there's a couple call there's a couple calls on hold that I want to take um, based on the amount of. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we're we're happy to have your support. To everyone listening and watching, like, comment, and subscribe because I'm on YouTube, so I have to say that. But also, please do. This is awesome. Um, and it's awesome because you make it awesome. Um, and thank you, Rob, for uh, for calling in. Thanks for calling, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're gonna have to end the live broadcast. That was portion. really fun. That yeah. That was cool. Yeah. And you are certainly welcome to stay for the. Yeah, I think in I, here I, I think I can stick around for a little more. Yeah. Do you have? Um, I think if we can initiate sign out sequence with love rings and. Uh, people in the booth with their finger on what the end is that? button. That's a trick. Yeah, it's a homage to the early episodes where that was one of the graphics that they had. Why is it green? Like, I think, wouldn't that compete with the green screen? Well, no, it's um, augmented reality, so they add it afterwards. The computer processes the green things that it takes in through the camera. Oh, it's not, I see. We're not yeah. looking at the final product. Well, no, we, we are, we, but we're not looking at the product that the computer... For everyone at home that <laughs> asked for a technical lesson in Brad, I, I, Fern can and, and Mark can explain it better than I can because yeah, yeah, yeah. they make it happen. I'll have to watch the show afterwards and see what, what it is, <laughs> yeah, is happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it does look like that, though. Um, okay. Although I would say green, a green circle, my understanding is that it's a more internationally recognized symbol. Racist symbol. Non-belief? What? I'm, I'm just, I don't know. No! Why is it that racist and despotic dictators try and take all of the best symbols? <laughs> and like, best Are you familiar uniform with those symbols, pretty much? design? You well, you follow the symbols? I, I mean, I don't follow. This show just a took a nasty word. turn. This took a nasty. Do you have a sign out? What is the. I, this is sabotage, sir, <laughs> with your competing you, my, my YouTube. My typical channel. sign out when I do SE is thank you for your time. Oh. Or, you know, hit me up later or. Thank you for your time and hit me up later. Good sign out. Yeah. Well, now you have to make up your own. That At this point, was, I feel like... That was my own. You just stole my own. Yeah, no, no. I mean, you have to make up another one, because I stole that one now. Oh. I don't know. Did, I feel I thought, like at some point, Mark's just going to cut us off. I thought you guys have a sign. Off, don't you have a probably, sign out? Like, we do. We have Be a nice to each other and something or other. No, that one would probably be good. The sign-off that Eric tries to get me to do every time, and that I accidentally mess up, um, and it's always amusing, <laughs> is what he wants me to do is turn to the camera and be like, for those of you that do believe, this is your home and you're always welcome here and we'll be there for you. For those of you that don't believe, we have one world, we share it, we don't hate you, we just think you're wrong. Um, but then, oh, uh -huh, dang it, They Mark. cut you off. Yeah. After show, Patreon. After we love show, Patreon.